Hi, Jana. Hi, Kathy. How are you? I'm good. It took me a second there, but I got it. Hey. <laughs> this is the library. Alone, yeah. <laughs> yes. Hi, everyone. This is the library. I'm Miss Kathy, and uh, Miss Jana is going to be here tonight telling us how to make a Southwest baked potato. So um, let's get your slide up there. Okay. Hi, everybody. As Kathy said, my name is Jonna, and we're doing the virtual cooking class adult version tonight. Our recipe is going to be a Southwest stuffed potato. This is our dinner presentation tonight. So it's kind of a, um, this can be used as a side dish, or I'll show you how to turn it into a main dish. Just want to let everybody know that I am a program assistant through the SNAP Ed here in Ross County through the Ross County Extension Office. I am employed by Ohio State University and just wanted to point out a couple of hashtags and websites there. One is the Snap Ed Works, which is our Celebrate Your Plate website, uh, celebrateyourplate.org, which is a fantastic site to go to to get some good healthy recipes, a lot of information about um, changing things up in your diet, some kids, kids information on there as well. And then the Choose My Plate or the hashtag Celebrate Your Plate is another great website. The My Plate is something that all of our program is based on. It is the new version of the food pyramid that I used when I was in school. The kids all know this and they know about the five food groups and how we need to incorporate those into our daily diet. So Kathy, if you wanna go ahead and flip over to me, I'll get this show on the road. Okay, so our recipe, as I said, is a Southwest baked potato. And if you register through the library, you should have received your packet that had most of the ingredients. I know they had some issues getting some of the um, ingredients this time. So I'm going to show you how to work around that because you probably have heard me say it before. If you've been to any of my other classes, cooking is not an exact science. It is just a science. You can just start throwing things together and make a recipe. It doesn't have to be something that you got to you know, okay, if you don't have everything in the recipe, well, can't make it. No. You can always substitute stuff in. So in your packet, there would have been a can of corn, a can of black beans. I can't get my things and you can't see if I we glow with lights anyway. Sorry about that. And then they also had some little canister of nacho cheese and some seasoning. This is the same Mexican um, seasoning that we've been using. I didn't realize when we set this series up that there was quite so many Mexican flavored dishes there, but hey, it works for me. So um so the recipe is going to call for two medium potatoes. Oh, the potatoes were in your packet as well. So it's going to call for two medium potatoes, some black beans, some salsa, the canned corn, and then some shredded cheese. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to make it according to the recipe pretty much. But then if, um, since we didn't have those ingredients on hand, I'll show you how to work around that. So let's get started here. Let me move my camera around so you can see what I'm doing. I have already pre-baked the potatoes. Actually, I pre-microwaved them, microwave them. And the recipe is going to tell you to do this entire recipe in the microwave. I kind of do things a little differently because I like to finish them off in the oven. But I've already pre-cooked my potatoes. I've got this little handy-dandy bag that um, a friend of mine made me a long time ago. And you just pop your baked potatoes in there. Um, or you can actually take them and just put them in a dish towel. Maybe moisten up the towel a little bit to keep your potatoes from drying out grab a fork here so I can get these potatoes prepped up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our baked potatoes once they come out of the microwave and we're going to just smash them up like you would if you were going to use them as a baked potato. Okay so we're just kind of flaying them down and you see I just make a cut across with my knife in a couple places and then just kind of spread them out and kind of smoosh them down. Okay so there that was that's how hard it is to prep the potatoes right there. Okay so I'm going to set them aside for just a minute. Now, the recipe calls for one cup of corn and one cup of the black beans. Well, a can this size, 15 ounce can, is about a cup and a half actually when you drain off the liquid. Now, speaking of draining off the liquid, using my handy dandy colander, I already drained this off. As you can see, the cans are empty. And um, try to always recommend that everybody pick up the low sodium, no sodium as far as your canned goods, as far as vegetables and beans. Those aren't always easy to find. So the one good thing about that, 
one thing I can tell you the good thing about it is you can drain that broth that's in these cans off, and that is where the bulk of the sodium is. So if you drain that off and then rinse it under running water for a few seconds, you're going to take a lot of that salt all out of there. So you're not going to have all that salt still in there. Anyway, so if you measure out a cup out of those cans, you're going to come up with about a cup and a quarter of, of each one. So I wound up with about two and a half cups here. You can see my beans on the bottom of the corner on the top. So instead of wasting that extra little bit of corn and beans, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in a recipe, okay? What I'm going to do with this is then I, then again, you're supposed to use, let me see, how much salsa is three quarters of a cup? Well, I just increased it to a cup, okay? So I'm going to dump that in there. There's my spatula. Now, okay, the salsa wasn't in your packet or... And luckily, I had exactly one cup of salsa in my refrigerator, or I'd have been trying to come up with a different thing. The good thing, good news about it, if you don't have any salsa in your pantry, you can always substitute. I've just got a can of diced tomatoes here. Throw in about a teaspoon of this mix, um, Mexican seasoning mix, and you've got an instant salsa there. It's going to be just the same. And then the good thing about it, too, if you want it just a little bit hotter, a little bit milder, you can take out a little bit of the spice mix, or you can add a little more in. So you got a little control over it that way. So that's a good thing. So I, like I said, I have the salsa, so I've got that on hand. So I'm going to mix this together. This recipe is so super simple. Now, like I said, it can be used for a side, and that's with a, a smaller potato. Um, you figure, okay, a small, actually, actually like a medium-sized potato, and you're going to put about a half a cup Three quarters of a cup of this mixture on top of it. Bring my potatoes back over here. I'm just going to take this corn and salsa and tomato mixture. I'm just going to spoon it over top of that. And get it nice and covered. You want to make sure that you get the potato all covered up really good. Now this says to put this in the microwave and reheat it. I like to put it in the oven because when you put it in the oven, it kind of, um, for one thing, it's going to, if it's cheese, it's going to kind of brown up the cheese a little bit. And it's also going to kind of crisp up the edges of the potato a little bit. So that's just a personal preference. You can put it in a microwave if you're short on time, but um, I'm going to stick them in the oven tonight just so I can show you how bubbly and nice it gets. And then about a quarter cup of cheese, which comes out to about oh, two tablespoons each on top of them. And then take my fork here and separate them a little bit. And then I'm going to pop these in the oven for about, I mean, they're already, it takes just about 10, 15 minutes to heat this up. I'm going to put them in and start them off. Then I'll have to put it back in when we're done to finish them off. So I can show you, give you a good idea of what they're going to look like, okay? Now, okay, this is a nice size, side dish, okay? Because you got your potato, you got your corn, you got your beans, you got a little bit of cheese. Now, if you wanted to make this into a dinner, Obviously, you're going to want to get a little bigger potato or maybe two potatoes per person with their smaller like this. Do the same process, smash them out, you know, bake them up in the microwave, lay them out flat, and then you can add some extra protein in. If you want to add in some ground chicken, some shredded chicken is good on here, or some ground beef or some shredded beef. Um, you could take a little bit of sausage in there, just put some extra protein in. Just watch your amount of your, of your fats that you're adding on to it. And then you can make it a little just larger, and maybe you can add in a little bit of sour cream with the cheese. And there you go, a nice dinner instead of just a side dish. Now, I'm going to take these tonight, and I've got some salmon that I'm going to cook out on the grill, make them as my side dish, and I've got everything covered there. I've got my protein in the salmon and the beans that are in the, in the potato. I've got a lot of vegetables. You've got your potatoes. You've got your tomatoes and the salsa. You've got your... Um, what I lose, the corn and the beans, the beans are doubling up as being protein and a vegetable. So you're getting well over your half your plate being um, fruits and vegetables. And now also, I forgot to mention too, now with the, with the, seed, the, the cheese, you could, this is not a problem. You can go ahead and put this nacho cheese on there. And this also has some extra seasoning in it as well. So when you're using things like this, be careful because you can get a little bit too much seasoning in there. So kind of keep an eye on how much you're using. But um, th these are handy to have around for the kids because you can use them for just about anything. Now, I had all this extra left over, right? Perfect. Stick it in a container, put it in the refrigerator. Um, tomorrow for lunch, pop your potato in the microwave, put a little extra over there, and voila, you got a lunch. This sets in the refrigerator for a good three or four days, easy. Um, or you can throw it into a container and throw it in the freezer and thaw it out and have it here in a couple weeks. So 
you can always refreeze the stuff, okay? Um, one thing I didn't talk about with the potatoes, you didn't see me do, I use my little scrub brush here. I scrub those potatoes up really well, make sure I got all the dirt off the outside of them. Potatoes obviously are a root vegetable, so they're coming straight out of the ground. We want to make sure, even though they've been through the processor and they've made them, packaged them up for the store, there's still a lot of dirt on the outside of those potatoes. So always make sure you're, if you're eating anything, leaving the skin on it, that you're scrubbing it up really good. But do not use any kind of chemical. Just water and a brush is all you need. You don't want to put any chemicals on there because you don't know what you could be getting in to, to hurt yourself. Okay, so um, since we're waiting on, on this to cook up just a little bit, my, mic, my, my microwave, my oven was good and hot, so it shouldn't take them too long to cook. But I wanted to talk a little bit about using beans as a protein. Right now, um, I'm sure you all have noticed that grocery store prices are going up, up, up. Um, protein, beef, chicken, fish, pork is probably the biggest thing that we're paying for right now at the grocery store. So the prices are really going out, up outrageously. So we still need our proteins. And a good way to substitute, substitute some of those in there is by using beans. And a good way to use them is just by, just like we did tonight, put them into like a casserole or a com combo dish like this, throw them in soup. Um, you can always puree them up or put them in a blender and make them like into like a refried bean type thing. And then put them in your soups or your stews for a thickening. It's um, going to add a little layer of flavor in there. Plus it's a really nice natural thickener. You don't have to put the extra um, flour or, or the like the cornstarch where you're getting the extra sugar in there. You don't have to add that. You're just getting good pure protein. Um, you can mash them up too and make them into dips. These are great. You can take a can of black beans or pinto beans, any kind of beans, put them in a blender, mash them up, throw a little bit of um, maybe some garlic in there and make like a refried bean with some dips. Really great. Um, you can even eat them cold if you like to, like a hummus, anytime you want to do that. And then I also wanted to kind of talk about, you know, what the prices of groceries going on. And I don't know if you all noticed, but it's gotten a lot cooler outside over the last few days. And we, you know what that means. The leaves are falling, so winter's coming. And with winter coming, it adds on the extra bills. Everybody's going to have to crank up that furnace. And, um, you know, it's just Christmas is coming. we got to worry about getting Christmas budget into our budget and that kind of stuff. So some ways we can kind of maybe stock up a little bit. We don't know what this winter is going to be like. I've been hearing via the the, um, the old farmer's almanac that it's going to be a pretty cold, nasty one. So we would probably, not that we can go out moving around too much with COVID as it is, but we're, still, we're going to have, maybe be limiting even more of the trips that we're going outside. So we might want to start, think, start thinking, I can't talk, guys, start thinking about stocking up our pantry and getting ready for the winter months. So, you know, you never know when you might have a bad snowstorm, be stuck in the house for a couple of days and... Uh, maybe the electric's going to go off and we're, you know, maybe we're going to hopefully, please not let what happen, but um, lose some meat and stuff. So by stocking up our pantry to be prepared for that, that's a little less, one less thing we have to worry about. And by stocking up, I mean by buying things, a lot more canned goods. You can buy canned meats, um, the canned tunas, chickens, um, the mackerel, salmon, that kind of stuff. You can always have those in your pantry. You can eat the, you can make those stretch into nice casseroles. You can make them into salads. You can make them into patties. There's, you know, canned meats, they kind of get a bad rap because I can remember, you know, when growing up, if it wasn't tuna, it wasn't Friday. So, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's, um, they are a nice thing to have on hand just in case we do have a, that little stretch of time there where we can't get out to get the fresh meats and that kind of stuff. Um, also, we can do things like buy up some extra bread right now and toss a couple of loaves in the back of the freezer. We can also do the same thing with milk. Um, when you buy a half gallon of milk and when you bring it home, take it and open it up and pour just a little bit off. You can toss that in the freezer, put the lid back on it tight, put it in the freezer, take a little bit out because it's going to expand. Any liquid will expand when you freeze it. But you can throw a couple of those in the freezer. So if you, you, know, you, you can't get to the store for a few days and you're out of milk, you can pull that out. Shake it up real good, and it's just like fresh milk. Um, on that note, too, you can buy the canned milks and the dried milks, and those are a good way to make your um, milk stretch. You can cook with the canned milk and the dried milk and save the fresh milk, the, 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 you know, the regular milk, for cereal and for the kids to drink and that kind of stuff. I mean, just it's um, Sometimes I like to use the canned milks in, like, um, 
cream-based soups and things like that because they have a different taste and it kind of makes them taste good. So you can stock up on things like that. You can um, stock up on things like rice and pasta. That's a good way to make your protein stretch. So you can take a pound of hamburger and make it into a big pot of spaghetti and feed your family of four or five for a couple days. Same way you can take um, some ground chicken and add it in with some pasta and some mix, some frozen vegetables to make a nice casserole dish. So just start thinking about, you know, do some research about some recipes that um, you can make to kind of keep on the back burner for potentially bad weather. I'm just kind of being the bearer of bad news. Sorry about that. But always, well, I always like to be prepared. I'm, I'm a big gardener, so I, I have my pantry stocked full of all kinds of vegetables right now. So when I think about stocking up, I think, okay, what about the proteins? What about the breads? What about the fresh fruits and vegetables? So, you know, use a lot of the, the frozen, um, the can, the shelf-stable stuff. Keep that on your shelf, and that way it's there if you need it. Obviously, we don't want to live on it all the time because we like the fresh stuff, but, you know, it's there when we need it. Okay, guys, let's check these things out. Let's see what's going on. I can guarantee you I can smell. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Looky here, guys. Don't those look yummy? I would finish these off by sprinkling a little bit of maybe some paprika or a little bit of this uh, Mexican seasoning mix over top of them. And they are going to be delicious. These are just about done. I'm not going to have to cook them too much longer. And it was only in there for, what, about five minutes? Um, you can actually speed this along just a little bit more by doing, as the recipe said, suggested, and throwing the bean and corn mixture in the microwave and heat it up before you put it on here. And then you just put it on and put your cheese on there. You don't even have to put it in the oven. But as you can see, I'm going to stick it back in just a little bit and get that cheese a little bit of a, a crunch on it because I like that crunchy cheese flavor. And there we go. We've got a really good side dish. Like I said, this can actually be a really good main dish as well. So, uh, and you can put anything in it. It doesn't have to be corn. You could maybe do, if you wanted to do um, some bell peppers, you could chop up some onions and bell peppers and put on there too. Play with it. It's no recipe is an exact science. You can just play with it and make it what you want. Sound good? Okay, Kathy, I think I've got, I've, I've um, talked them as much as I can. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> they, no look, anybody, so. they look delicious. They I'm going to have to try that. It yeah. really looks um, good. They're really good right in the door last minute. Got to hurt me something on the table. Mm -hmm. and I, if, you got, if you got a can of canned chicken, I've done that before. Just throw it in with it, heat it all up and throw it on there and then pop it in the oven like that. Really good. Yeah. That that perfect. Good yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I know last week I talked a little bit about um, some things that were coming up. This week I've got the dates for those uh, movie nights that's coming up in October. So the first one is going to be October 9th. They're all going to be held at Mount Logan. Um, the 9th, the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th. So those are the dates. We would love for people to come. We got a new screen. I saw your new screen. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. yeah, it is. So um, we hope everybody, if you can come, please do. It'll be a lot of fun. So that's I a good weekly you. outing. Huh? That, that would be great. I mean, yes. and just, uh, just the kids, they don't know what a whole drive in experience is. So that's, exactly. That's cool. Yeah. I yeah. used to love the drive in movies. Me too. My mom would load yeah. us up in the car with a bag yep. of popcorn and a pitcher of Kool Aid, and we'd go to the movies. <laughs> so, That's what we did too. So, uh, yeah. Well, I will be back with the kids next week, and we will be doing salad in a bag and chicken cranberry quesadillas. A couple oh. of really good recipes. I mean, you adults might want to might want to tune in for these quesadillas. They're really good. So sound good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks All for having right. me. Well, thank you. It's always a, I learn something new every time I listen. So. <laughs> me too. <laughs> no, okay. No, no, no. All, right. All right. Well, thanks. thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.